Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about another exam objective for the Autodesk Fusion 360 Certified User Exam. And in this one we're going to continue on in part modeling and we're going to be looking at creating a pattern of features. So with that we're going to move into Fusion. Here I've already got some pre-made parts that I've created. So I have this plate has a has a square opening in it and I'm going to create a rectangular um, well, one of the options is a rectangular pattern, but I'm going to use that rectangle to create a circular pattern. So I want to pattern it around there. So circular pattern will be the first thing I do. So when I click on it, first thing that you're going to look for probably by default is the type is set to faces. So if we want to look at that, we can also pattern bodies, features. We can also pattern components. So in this case, I want to pattern a feature. So in this scenario, if I select this feature, or if I go down here to my model history tree, I can also choose it down here and it will highlight in the graphics area. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose, you can choose it on the part. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to do that. So that's why I go down and choose the feature from the timeline uh, most often. And then I'm gonna hit select next to axis and I wanna choose what axis to pattern around. So I'm gonna choose the green axis and you can see we're gonna do either, you can do a full uh, circular pattern, you can do an angle, this kind of works very similar to revolve and or you can do a symmetric so you will can kind of see how it kind of does that so right now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a full uh, rotation I'm gonna go ahead and you'll notice there's a checkbox for suppress so you'll notice we get all these little checkboxes so the suppress option allows us to go through and still create a pattern so if I uncheck one of these you'll notice it does not adjust or uh, manipulate the others it just simply does not put in that one instance so I could turn off by toggling off or turning these back on depending upon you know what is desired and then I can look, go through and take a look at putting in maybe uh, how many that I want so if I put 10 in there and then the compute option will kind of tell you with the tooltip is that optimize creates identical copies of patterning the feature faces which is the fastest method that can be done. So the other one is identical, which creates identical op, uh, copies of re replicating the results of the original features. So we use, it says the use when optimized is not possible. And then you have adjust, which creates potentially different copies by calculating the extents or terminations of each instant individually, which is the slowest. It takes the most amount of computing power in order to go through and do so. So, so a lot of times I do uh, optimized whenever we can. And when I choose OK, it still provides us with that same effect. So it's just creating the faces and then it's going through and patterning and extruding those through as we go along. So that's circular pattern. And the best part about utilizing circular pattern, this is in the course, the 3D create menu. And there is a circular pattern and a rectangular pattern in the sketch environment. But the benefit of utilizing it here is that this is easily can be edited. It's an easy, easily editable kind of feature that we have within Fusion 360. So that's one benefit to doing it here. All right, here with the rectangular pattern, I have a part here. I'm going to go to create pattern. It's going to operate very similar to circular pattern. First thing it wants to make me do is it wants me to choose what kind of type of item that I want to pattern. So I'm going to choose features and it wants me to select the object. So I'm going to select this little cylinder that's on the top of the rectangle here. And it wants me to choose the directions. So I'll choose select. And then either you can choose the axes or you can choose like edges on the part. Either option gives you some more flexibility. So I'm going to choose this horizontal line. You'll notice the blue arrow gets highlighted, which means we're going to start going kind of horizontally first, going across, like uh, as far as to cover the width. And then the other one will cover the depth going from front to back. So here on our distance type, we can either do extent or we can do spacing. So either one. And again, we have that suppressed checkbox that we can use as well. So let's try four of these and then the spacing, the distance we will have will be, let's try one inch. And this kind of gives us a preview. So one inch may be a little too short on our spacing between our components. Two inches should work pretty well. And that's what we're seeing there. So there's four cylinders being patterned in. If I change that to extent, you know, you'll see it changes automatically to six inches. So because that's the width of our of our part there. So and that's kind of what's going on is it's determining how many that we can fit within the extent or how many that we want to fit in there. So if I bump this up to five, 
you can see that goes through and just puts in a little bit closer spacing and does some of the calculation for us. If I put six in there, you can see we start getting a little closer with some of our cylinders on our spacing. So that's the extent versus spacing is that would be, and here it automatically calculated if we went through and we, you know, it's got 1.2 inches between each cylinder. So here I'm going to change, I'm going to leave it at extent and then I'm going to go ahead and move to the second direction. So I can usually, what I like to do is either you can click on, usually I click on the arrow and then it allows me to see that. Now you can click and grab on the arrow and kind of see by default, it's got three inch spacing with three, which looks like it works pretty well with our model, but we could always go through and make some changes and the same options we have direction types. We could do symmetric or we could do one direction. And I would do, in this case, you can see what the effects are for both. So, and again, the adjust or the identical or optimized. So we'll try optimized. Again, that's gonna be the fastest computing option that we have available and we're gonna say, okay. And that's gonna give us our rectangular pattern. Now, the other thing is as well, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna edit the rectangular pattern is you could go through and have, for example, you just not wanna do both directions. So I can put in here, I could have, now you see that has quantity of zero. So I could go one and then just go through and have that there where I just have one row and I have six of these being patterned across and say, okay. So you can just rectangular pattern in one direction. And that's one benefit of, of utilizing this option. So, or we could have also gone through, done the exact same thing, change this to one, change this to three and pattern just in the one direction. So that's the really flexible benefit of utilizing rectangular pattern. All right, the last one here that will be, would be covered on the Fusion 360 exam is called pattern on a path. So I know there's a new pattern option that has just been put in here recently called geometric pattern, but for the ACU exam, pattern on a path might be the only, is probably the only one that's gonna be of these four options. The first three are the ones that are gonna show up. So pattern on a path is a really cool option. You can choose again, what features you want. I'm gonna change this little, take this little rectangular prism and I'm gonna choose the path that I want to follow. So I'm gonna choose the arc at the top and then I'm gonna kind of turn this to the top edge as well. And here you can, again, choose the suppress option if you wish, what kind of distances. I'm gonna click and grab the grip. You can see the distances will go through and change. And then as you turn around, you're gonna see here, again, you're gonna see this square, this uh, rectangular prism will kind of get just a little bit, um, a little bit cut off as we do so. But this could give you an option as far as you want to pattern these along this particular path. And so here, what quantity we want, Maybe we want five. Again, this is gonna go a distance. So a certain distance, you'll see that it climbs. You can set a start point if you want. Extent and spacing are the options that we have. So for example, if I want uh, them to be one inch apart, that would go through. Again, this one running on the edge, so I might suppress it. And then you have one direction, you could go symmetric. So you can see the effect that that has. It just takes the middle component and or makes the first component kind of the middle and kind of goes on each side. And then you can either have identical for the orientation or you could have it follow the path direction. So you can kind of see here, it kind of turned my, my objects as they went along and they follow the path. So depending upon what they have. And again, I'm gonna go optimized on the compute option and I can say, okay. And this allows me to see, you know, that this is gonna follow and pattern along the, the arc path that I selected. So again, a lot of the same options you see in all three of these patterning uh, tools. And so that's just kind of getting more familiar with those and seeing what you have to work with. All right, this is the end of looking at the patterning features. So in another video, we'll cover another Autodesk Fusion uh, certified user exam objective. And with that, keep studying. Keep trying out. If you got questions, uh, contact me. But otherwise, check out other videos for more exam objectives.